Coming up, we're talking Outlaws at Peevely, All-Stars at Attica, USAC at Atomic, the Spring Nationals Late Models, plus NASCAR on Dirt and North Wilkesboro News. Let's go. Today is Monday, April 18th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. It's been a jam-packed last few days in the dirt racing world, so a lot to get to from the weekend. We'll start with the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars at Peevely. The Outlaws lost the Friday night show at Peevely Terrain, which was pretty much expected with the forecast. We even talked about it on the Friday show. But we did get to see them race on Saturday night, and things were wild. I saw a tweet from Shane Stewart that referenced new dirt down on the track, and that combined with that Friday rain led to what ended up being a rough racetrack. Three and four wasn't super terrible, but one and two was really treacherous. It was a really big bump into turn one that caught a lot of cars out, kind of right through the middle. And that was especially on the midget side. The midget heat races were an absolute mess with several crashes and flips. On night li uh, nights like this, you certainly don't want to see anyone tear up equipment, but I feel like we often end up talking about these race nights long after they're done. I know the drivers and teams don't like them, but tough conditions like we saw at Peebly always make for wild races, and Saturday was no different. Everybody was talking about the outlaw feature. Thanks to his first dash win of the season, Logan Shuhart was on the pole for the feature, but a well-timed caution early on allowed third starting Carson Macedo to take advantage, and he ended up officially leading all 35 laps. Macedo didn't uh, escape unscathed, though, and there were fireworks behind him as well. On a restart following a caution for a slowing Joe B. Miller, Sheldon Hoddenshield got into the back of Brad Sweet and the contact broke Sheldon's front end. He ended up tipped over because of the damage. And then in the work area, the teams were able to get a new front end installed to get the wing kind of good enough. And then Sheldon was able to return to the race. We were then treated to an epic run through the field with Sheldon eventually finishing in the fourth position. And honestly, without that contact with James McFadden towards the end, he may have finished even better than he did was a perfect example of the ongoing duality that is Sheldon Hoddenshield. He's incredibly talented and can win on any night out, but that aggressiveness and full send mode we saw on Saturday night that got him to the front also gets him into trouble and often leads to crashes and tough races through the season. He won't contend for a championship until he can find ways to rein it in when necessary, but man does it make him fun to watch. And I said Macedo didn't get away unscathed. The lap car of Kerry Madsen jumped the cushion in one and two, and Macedo hit the 83 Junior with his right rear. Somehow, though, the contact and whatever damage there was didn't affect the speed of the 41. So Macedo became the first three-time winner with the Outlaws in 2022. Logan Schuhart was second in his best run of the season. Brad Sweet finished third. Sheldon, like I said, fourth. And James McFadden completed the top five. David Gravel was hard charger with a 17th to 7 run. The series will now head to Tri-City Speedway in Illinois on Friday and then Hobstadt on Saturday. Sweet maintains the lead atop the World of Outlaws standings. Macedo and Gravel are now tied for second. They're 48 points back. Sheldon is fourth. He's 72 back. And then James McFadden jumped over shots into fifth. He's 120 back. I think another driver to keep an eye on coming up is Spencer Baston in that CJB5. That team had a rough opening weekend at Volusia, but things have stabilized in recent weeks. And now Baston has seven top tens in his last eight races, and he's got the third best average finish over the last five races. As we get kind of into the meat of the Outlaw schedule, this team could make some noise, I think. CJB, obviously a very decorated sprint car team, and Basin is a two-time Outlaw winner himself. I would not be surprised to see this team grab some wins as we head into the summer. And then in that midget portion of the night at Peebly, Chase McDermott grabbed his first Power Eye National victory, topping Joby Miller and Tanner Berryhill. It's also the first win for the Mounts Stout midget team, so a big night for those guys. Over in Ohio, we got sprint car racing of both the non-wing and winged varieties. At Attica Friday and Saturday, we saw the first two points-paying races of the season for the All-Stars, and it was a banner way for Tyler Courtney to begin his title defense. Friday night, he outdueled Craig Mintz and Justin Peck to grab the win, and Saturday was just complete domination, with Sunshine leading wire to wire. So if you include the two nights at East Bay earlier in the year, Sunshine's All-Star finishes for 2022 are first, third, first, and first. 
It's a very strong message to send to the rest of the all-star field about the way this season might go. The rest of the Friday night top five included Greg Wilson, Mintz, Scott Boguski, and Parker Price Miller. I called Boguski, by the way. The rest of the Saturday top five was Zeb Wise, Cole Duncan, Corey Eliason, and Hunter Schoenberg. We had really good car counts both nights, and there was some drama. The Justin Peck Sunshine battle from Friday was definitely noteworthy. Peck was my Friday night win pick, and things were looking pretty good until late in the going. Courtney tried a slider in three and four that didn't really work, and kind of Peck ended up up the racetrack and spun out. I still am not sure if there was actually contact between the two cars. I've seen a couple of different camera angles, and still I'm not sure if there was actually any contact. But per the 360 rule, Peck had to go to the rear. He then raced back up to ninth at the end. Afterwards, there were comments from both Courtney and Peck, but both guys seemed okay with what happened, so I'm guessing there won't be anything of this going forward. On Saturday night, we saw Travis Philo upset after a crash, and he had to be actually held back and then escorted away by track officials. And then also, I like this, after a flip, big kudos to Craig Mintz for getting out of his car, running back to the work area with all of his safety gear on, and then helping his team get that 09 fixed and ready to roll again. Rare to see a driver actually out of the car and fixing the car in the work area. Headed to Pennsylvania this weekend, Courtney obviously leads the all-star points. Hunter Schoenberg, Greg Wilson, Cap Henry, and Bill Baylog are all in a tie for second. They are 26 points behind Sunshine. And a few hours away on Saturday night, the USAC National Sprint Cars were taking on the Atomic Speedway for the first time in many years. The car count was light, though, only 20 entries, and you have to believe the tire situation that we've seen had some effect on that. The Lincoln Park show on Saturday night had Jake Swanson, Ty Mahako, Timez, Shane Cockrum, and some other guys who you would probably have seen normally in action with USAC. I think that the owners meeting USAC held did some good following the tire testing results, but it seems like some teams are still not pleased and are staying away. So it'll definitely be a storyline to follow as the season progresses. So you've basically got what's going on with the tire situation keeping guys away, and then you've also seen this exodus of guys. So Tyler Courtney, Chris Windham, uh, Kevin Thomas Jr. So that's, that USAC field is starting to get pretty light. As for the event itself, it was a crazy day for Robert Ballou. His Toter home blew a steer tire on the way to the track, causing significant damage to the truck, but they were able to get to Atomic and race. Ballou then grabbed a second place finish to turn a crap day into a decent one. Out front, the win belonged to Brady Bacon. He started on the pole and led all 30 laps. Justin Grant tried to challenge him late, but he exploded a left rear tire in the closing stages and was only race, uh, able to race his way back to seventh. So Bacon with the win, Ballou second, CJ Leary third, Chase Dock and fourth, and Kyle Cummins completed the top five. Things at Atomic are definitely on an upswing this year with Charlie Vest in charge, and it was fun to watch the non-win cars go around that place. With four race nights complete, Emerson Axum maintains the USAC points lead over Grant, Stock, and Cummins, and now Bacon. Series is back April 29th at Bloomington. As for my season-long win picks, we've done selections for 44 races up to this point. I have seven correct picks, and the DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula has eight. We were each uh, one for four this weekend. The formula correctly picked Sunshine on Saturday, and I had Bacon correct on Saturday. In weekend late model action, we had some good racing with the Spring Nationals at With and Taswell. Friday at With, Brandon Overton stocked Jonathan Davenport throughout the race and then put a move on him in the final corners to steal the victory. It was a really fun feature. If you haven't watched that, go find that one in the uh, uh, kind of in the vault section or archive section over at Flow Racing. Saturday at Taswell, Chris Madden scored another big money win this season, taking home the $21,000 top prize. He topped Ricky Weiss and Dale McDowell. Both With and Taswell are pretty wild joints. They've got some pretty crazy banking, and the speeds there are really high. Elsewhere, Corey, he uh, Corey Hedgecock was an Ironman winner at Ponderosa. Josh Rice earned $10,000 at Florence. Caden Honeycutt was the crate winner at Golden Isles. And Johnny Persley won the Carolina Clash race at Fayetteville. In other weekend open wheel action, Danny Dietrich won again at Lincoln. Anthony Macri hard charged his way to the win at Port Royal after also winning Friday night at Williams Grove. Mitchell Moles was a USAC Western States midget winner at Bakersfield, and Corey Day topped the weekly 360 show at Ocean. Normally, we would close the show down around this point, but I did want to talk about the NASCAR weekend and the North Wilkesboro news today. Ben Rhodes won the Truck Series race on Saturday at Bristol, but we did get to see the, uh, see the debut of Buddy Kofoid. He had a start in the rear of the truck race, then raced his way into the top five, but then spun late and finished 27th. Definitely not the result he was hoping for, but he did look good in that KBM truck, so hopefully we get to see him again in the future. 
I said it Friday, but Buddy is definitely one of the most talented young racers we have in the country right now, and he showed that in his first ever opportunity in the cup or in the truck series. In the cup race last night, Kyle Busch was the benefactor of a last lap incident between Tyler Reddick, uh, who was leading and second place Chase Briscoe. Reddick looked like he was on his way to his first career cup win, but Briscoe threw an overly ambitious slider uh, attempt at uh, Reddick there on the final laps, uh, wiped both of them out. Reddick was diplomatic afterwards, and unlike some other NASCAR drivers we've seen lately, didn't throw hands at Briscoe when he came up to apologize. With Briscoe's dirt experience, I would have hoped for some better decision-making on his end, but he chose to go for the win, which I also kind of understand at some point. It just sucks that he basically ruined Reddick's chances, and then in turn finished 22nd himself. I did, th uh, did think the racing was better this year at Bristol with the way the track prep went. It wasn't completely confined to the bottom. We did get to see some guys uh, kind of racing all over the place. It was also not great to have the races slowed by so many cautions, but with some of these guys having so little dirt experience, it's going to happen. The cup cars are done on dirt for the year, but the trucks are still headed to Knoxville later this summer. And finally today, another paved track will see some dirt racing this season. In an announcement on Friday, actually at Bristol, it was revealed that North Wilkesboro here uh, in North Carolina is being revived and it will host a combination of paved and dirt races in 2022 before being repaved for the 2023 season. Speedway Motorsports owns the facility and it will work with Barry Braun and the XR Group to make this all happen. The dirt event specifically will happen in the month of October with several divisions of racing plan that does include super late models, 410 sprint cars, and big block modifieds among others. They are still working through a lot of the details including potential sanctioning bodies getting involved and broadcasting details. But Wilkesboro coming back I think is really cool. I've been wanting to check that place out. I, I said this actually, we did a live stream uh, on Saturday night. And if I had a time machine, Wilkesboro is one of those places I would want to go back to kind of in its heyday in maybe the 70s or 80s and see a NASCAR race there. I think it'll be an interesting place too to see some dirt races in that month of October. There will be some scheduling conflicts, including for the first super late model weekend, October 7th and 8th. That, that's actually up against the Lucas weekend. I'm curious to see what happens with that sprint car weekend, October 21st and 22nd. There is no outlaw race that weekend, and the All-Stars are done by that point. It's probably a bit too much wishful thinking to hope that the Outlaws might sanction those two nights, but a guy can dream. As things get more clear, we'll keep you posted on what's to come at Wilkesboro. The only thing on the streaming schedule today is Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Monday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.